Thank you again. Uh, I found it a very interesting discussion. So uh, now it's time to have a little gymnastic for all of you. So I hope you saved this one. That's the gymnastic device. Uh, we would uh, have some... Uh, Peter, I think we need your finger. Ah, oh, that's okay. Um, so uh, we would like to vote and see if uh, it's a test if we understood this session, uh, all of us. Um, and uh, we would ask you some questions and we would ask you to vote with this uh, little device. First, a couple of rules. Uh, you should not put it down under the table and point towards the floor, but rather up in the air when you uh, want to vote. Uh, otherwise, uh, your vote will not be counted, so that would be a pity. The other rule is that when it gives a green light, it means it works. If it gives you a red light, it's not working your device, then uh, please try again or, or see maybe there's something um, out of battery or, or something wrong. Let's uh, start with a, a test vote. Uh, it's not yet, it's only when I say enter, now it's open for, for voting. Uh, and we try here, um, first of all, we need to find out where we are after this uh, discussion. So we say the size of Malta is uh, 316 kilometers. What is the population of Malta? Is it around 5,500, 55,000? 250,000, 450,000, or 1.5 million. So I open now, so please uh, give your uh, vote, and we can see. Um, we give a little time, this is also to find out how many are awake on this uh, time of the, the day? Uh, 68, 69. Um, I think we say this is, if you vote, then it's now. Otherwise, we close the voting procedure here. So most people said uh, 450,000. Um, and a few were above and uh, below that vote. That was uh, just a test for the system working. The next question is more about the topic today. So we say, why do we need smart buildings? One, we need to increase energy efficiency and save energy. To make the, two, to make the energy system more flexible and resilient. Three, to enhance uh, quality of life and productivity, so that's more the quality, to improve air quality in and around buildings, number four, and five, if you don't know and you don't really have uh, a feeling about this. So I open for voting, so please vote. What are we coming closer? Give a little second more. So please vote if you want to participate here and you haven't done. Um, okay, this was it. Here uh, we start seeing the uh, interesting elements. Most people want to make the energy system more flexible and resilient. Quite some people want to save energy, uh, and some people want to uh, in, increase the, the life quality and, and uh, uh, productivity. Only very few people have no uh, concern here. Interesting is three different aspects that are getting quite high score. Let's try one more. Which aspect of uh, smart buildings is the most important? One, the uh, ability to respond to the needs of the occupant. Uh, two, the ability to optimize building maintenance and operation. Three, ability to the needs of the electricity grid. Uh, four, support more holistic design of buildings and systems. 
and five, again, I don't know. Open for voting, so please vote. <coughs> you can only vote once, so, uh, but you can try again. So uh, I think we stop here because it is. So that's clearly looking at this from the uh, user perspective and saying that we need to improve the, the um, uh, ability to respond on the occupant side. And with an even score, we have the, the three others optimizing building maintenance, uh, respond to needs of the electricity grid, and more holistic design uh, of buildings. Let's take, uh, I think there was one more. Uh, which area of smart buildings will see the most innovation in the next three to five years, uh, relatively short term? Uh, it is the uh, one interoperable Rapidity of data, that's really a word that uh, is difficult to say at this time of the day. Uh, two, uh, control interfaces for the building occupant. Three, uh, the automatized uh, building maintenance improvement. Four, enhancement of indoor climate and quality. Or five, I don't know. Again, open for voting, please vote. So I think we are in the 63, which we were before, so that's probably most of you have voted. Um, here we see the uh, control interfaces for the uh, uh, consumers. That's what we see as the most development in the coming time after that uh, data uh, interoperability. And then with lower score, uh, the, the other elements. So there was a clear preference here for uh, interfaces. Then uh, we say, what about the smartness indicator? We had different questions uh, around this. What is most promising? One, to provide better information to the consumers. Two, to provide better information to investors. Three, to provide a better basis for policy development. Four, as a tool for developers, advisors, uh, to improve the design of buildings. And four, five, I don't know. Please vote. We usually get a few more, so please vote. I stop now. Uh, that is, first of all, the information aspect for the ordinary uh, consumer. And second, it's to improve the uh, ability to design better uh, buildings and help designers in getting it right. The other ones are relatively low. Um, then the fifth question is, how uh, can smart buildings contribute to the clean energy transition? So this is the greener uh, Europe. By uh, one, by lowering energy bills for the consumers. Two, by empowering uh, users uh, with control over their uh, own energy consumption and production when you sell it. Three, by migrating peak energy loads in the grid. Um, four, by gathering and utilizing data on building energy use. And five, I don't know. Please again uh, vote. Okay, we are on the 61 that I would have, three, okay, four. More people want to vote here by the end. Um, I think that's uh, it, we stop again. 
And the two clearly uh, option was to uh, empowering the users. And then it was the idea we heard about migrating uh, the peak energy loads in, in the grid. So making the grid smarter, actually, by having smarter buildings. Um, the other one has a significant lower uh, score in this. I think this is the last uh, question we have. And this is about what is the biggest obstacle, what is hampering us to go for the smart building revolution, we call it here. Um, it's the lack of uh, reliable and accessible data. Two, it is uh, rigid regulation framework, so most of the uh, EU is still closed for demand response, so it's difficult to act. Three, the absence of dynamic pricing. Uh, four, uh, low energy prices. And five, again, I don't know. I open for voting. So there usually come one or two more, so that's the last uh, chance to vote, and then I close. So that was um, looking at the regulation, that it's the regulation is hampering uh, the development of this, so that's probably something that should be looked into. Then uh, the problem with pricing, uh, if you don't get more for doing right, then you might not do right. And the last one, uh, which I would highlight, is that uh, if prices were higher, this was much easier. So let's increase the prices. Uh, uh, people are not happy about that. So that was uh, the, the little vote. Uh, so we, we took the pulse. Where do you see things uh, standing here? So it's probably funny to do a similar things in some years and see where did we go? Where, where did this really develop? This was the last uh, part of uh, this uh, event. The only thing that uh, is left, and I don't have many minutes for that, that is to conclude and come up with some conclusions. And I think it's difficult to come with clear conclusions after a meeting like this. I think we should also stress that this is a beginning of a long march. It's not the last steps uh, that you take in the end. And therefore, uh, we should be open, we should develop things, we should uh, see that this is a new holistic way of thinking which requires both uh, things on the building side, on the automatic, uh, on the grid, on the regulation. There's a lot of things that needs to fall in place uh, in this. I think it's worth stressing that uh, more people were mentioning if you go a little up in scale, it's like things become more possible and you can do more. If you have a group of buildings, if you have a connection, if you have the cars in the picture we saw in, in, in some of the buildings. So this integrating, using that we now have data power and we can combine much more than we, uh, we could in the past. Uh, there's still a lot of things to, to develop um, and we get the first views on the possible indicators and uh, we got here your point of view what is important for this indicator which can actually help designing the indicator so that it fits with uh, the, the target we want uh, the indicator uh, to fulfill. This is not the last page written in that story. Uh, first, we need to get the indicator as a, a requirement in, in the directives. And then uh, we need to come up with uh, clever solutions, and we need to uh, distribute and spread these uh, among the people.